good afternoon to all of you. Uh, good morning. <laughs> I came from a distant town and uh, my time zones are really quite confused. I'm sorry about for being a little late. And I don't have a PPT, but I think that's a good thing because you'll all look at me at least, rather than looking at the screen. So I come from India, and uh, I work on the western coast of India. You, you must have heard of Mumbai, Bombay, and I, I, my office is in Bombay. And I'm here to talk about expanding the marine protected area network of my country outside the territorial waters. We all know that the IG target is, you know, is already fulfilled by some of the countries, but many other countries are really struggling to reach that target. And the, this target hangs like a sort of Damocles of uh, the country, many countries. <coughs> we have to reach it by 2020. In the terrestrial ecosystem, uh, the country's record is very impressive. My country's record is very impressive. <coughs> they have already exceeded the target and uh, probably reached 19% including all the reserve forest, protected forest that we have. But in the marine environment, we have just reached 4.97%. So we all hear about a lot of uh, you know, debate in the international circles about ABNJ, areas beyond national jurisdiction, where there's tremendous scope for increasing the you know, square, you know, network of marine protected areas. But have we exhausted the scope of declaring MPAs within the national jurisdiction? But if you look at my country's record, we have about 2 million square kilometers of EEZ. And includes about, you know, uh, one-fourth of it is uh, the continental shelf. And all our marine protected areas, 124 of them, most of them, 100 are in the islands, but 24 are in the mainland. But all of them are close to the coast, inside the territorial waters, and none outside. So we recently conducted a survey in the western uh, coast of uh, the country, about uh, 60 nautical miles away. We have a place called Angria Bank, which is uh, a very shallow area compared to the surrounding waters of about 1000 meter depth. This place has got a 20 meter depth and it's like a submerged plateau. <coughs> and as because of the shallow depth and because of the distance from the coast, there is tremendous coral growth there. Now this is a potential marine park for us. Then we looked at the legislation, whether we can declare it as a marine protected area. And the principal legislation for declaring protected areas in our country is the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. And in the Wildlife Protection Act, all the national park sanctuaries in the terrestrial region are declared. Even the marine parks in the coastal region, they are all declared under the Wildlife Park and, uh, Protection Act. And when we looked at the legislation, we found that there is no provision for declaring uh, a protected area outside the territorial waters. And this was surprising because probably no, nobody really paid serious attention to that. In, we are a federal country and uh, territorial wars waters are within the jurisdiction of the provincial governments. And outside the provincial waters, the federal government which has got the jurisdiction. But all the national parks and sanctuaries are declared by the provincial governments. There is hardly any you know, land occupied by the federal government. So all land belongs to the provincial government. So it is natural that the declaration of the protected area would be done by the provincial government. But here is a situation where the national government has jurisdiction of a very vast area, and nobody ever thought about you know, putting a, a provision in that legislation. This is the federal legislation. The, the Wildlife Protection Act is a federal legislation, but implemented also by the states or the provinces. And nobody ever thought about you know, federal government itself declaring a national park at some point of time. But here, this is a huge area. And then uh, we, you know, we are now working on you know, improving the legislation, you know, amending it and all that. But we also found that we have a beautiful act called the Maritime Zones Act. The Maritime Zones Act was declared in 1976, even before the UNCLOS was uh, ratified by the UN. 
but the, the unclosed process began sometime in the 1950s. So we have been parallelly working and we had our own act from 1976. And that talks about conservation. And that talks, talks about the conservation in the exclusive economic zone, in the territorial waters and also in the continental shelf. And that has got a provision called declaring designated areas. And designated areas are for conservation. So there is a provision. But this is administered by, by our Ministry of External Affairs, which is not too keen on all these conservation issues. The conservation <laughs> is the domain of the Ministry of Environment and Forest. So they administer the uh, Wildlife Protection Act. So there are several conflicts. What I am trying to drive is, there, there could be similar situations in other countries where we have really not explored the scope of declaring marine protected areas within our national jurisdiction. And uh, then we talk about you know, ABNJs you know, going beyond the national jurisdiction. Let us look inward, let us look inside, whether there is any scope for doing that. But there are many countries who have already done that, they have saturated the, the national jurisdiction areas. The coastal areas are ridden with conflict because there are so many players there, the ports, the fisheries, the, the harbors, the oil refineries, everybody is on the coast. So the scope for declaring uh, more national parks in the or sanctuaries within the <coughs> coastal area or within the territorial waters is very limited. But there's a huge area out there, but we don't know what biodiversity is there. We need to explore that. So what with that small exploration that we have done with the help of National Institute of Oceanography, we could find that there's tremendous uh, no, scope for doing this. And it needs to be protected because there could be no other uh, no threatening uh, uh, no activities which like the, the, the Navy also has a presence there and there are other operations happening there. So we need to protect them. So but we need to identify which are our biodiversity hotspots. And in uh, for a developing country to do that, one is the enabling legislation which I talked about, it is required, no doubt. But we also need you know, a lot of you know, technical help, the experience sharing of uh, you know, people who have done, uh, who are managing uh, the uh, the MPAs outside the territorial waters, far far away from the coast, and it also requires a lot of capital uh, you know, investment and a lot of you know other funding requirements. So can't we think of something like a, a CDM fund or a Red Plus fund, which we have a global at the global level to support this movement? Because if if we have a fund like that, I think a lot of countries can uh, really boldly think of uh, declaring more and more MPAs outside the territorial waters. So I think it is time that we thought about a, a global fund for supporting such movements. And that will probably help in expanding our uh, the, 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 the global goal of reaching uh, the conservation target of 10% in our coastal and marine areas. This is the sum and substance of my presentation. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Thank you very much.